So Carol's just going to talk for a few minutes about the, the work that the foundation um, does and, the, and outline the many ways that um, people can um Welcome. It's a great pleasure to see so many of our frequent flyers here today. Welcome again. And as Marie said, we've got some wonderful um, supporters of ours in the audience today and some of our partners for the future who are very special uh, people who've decided to leave a gift in their wills to look after the health outcomes of future generations. So for the new people here today, I just thought I'd give you a quick overview of Garvin per se. You're hearing about osteoporosis and neurodegenerative diseases today, but beyond that we also do cancer, diabetes and metabolism, and immunology. So of course immunology takes in things like type 1 diabetes and asthma and rheumatoid arthritis, those kind of areas. And of course we have a very large cancer division here at the Garvin. Oops, forward, sorry. And did you know, interestingly, we have over 652 staff here at the Garvin. I'm sure you didn't realise there were that many scientists running around upstairs. Well, actually, over half of those are scientists, and then they have um, students and support staff as well. 60% of the people here are actually females, and we're very proud of that, not because of any positive affirmation, affirmation um, uh, policies, but because I've heard over in America that's still not the case, and some of our students come over here and they say that it's very male-dominated still over there. Um, the average age of our researcher here is 35, I'm doing my best to pump up the averages here. <laughs> and we have staff representing over 53 countries, which is very exciting when you go to have a meal upstairs in our coffee shop. So as the foundation here at the Garvin, we have a very important role of supporting the research. And we are what's called the fundraising and marketing arm of the Garvin. But for every dollar that we receive from the Garvin, from the government, from peer-reviewed grants and funding in that manner, we have to raise actually another 70% from the community to help support the work. That's quite a big ask. And that kind of, that 70% actually helps to fund brand new novel projects and the equipment that our scientists need to do their work. In addition to fundraising, of course, the foundation does mornings like this, where we're educating the public. Of course, there are many ways you might be able to help if you're not helping already, and we'd love to have you on board as one of our supporters, but we have people already in the community, in our corporate partners, and today we have some people working, uh, volunteering from the NAB Bank helping us out, and they have some other programs in place as well. Many people in the community are doing all sorts of crazy things for us. They're shaving their heads, they're um, running on crazy runs down all over Australia. We had a gentleman just ride his unicycle around Australia for over a year, a very uncomfortable year he had. And uh, if anyone else would like to ride the unicycles around, feel free. He actually raised nearly $2 million for breast cancer. Very worthwhile. And of course, um, many of our corporate sponsors are helping with um, pre-tax dollars in workplace giving. Many people here may be already supporting us with a regular gift, and we call those our Garvin Institute Associates. And we're very, very careful how we treat our donors here at the Garvin. We always ask them how often they'd like to hear from us. And I think you'd all appreciate that. You don't want to be inundated with many pieces of correspondence when that's not what you're after. Um, of course, now you're all word of mouth ambassadors. So go out and spread the word about the fantastic work that's being undertaken here right under, on your doorstep. And of course, as I mentioned, a gift in your will, which is a very important and special gift that many of us feel very proud to have been able to achieve. And I know myself that's something that I've done because I believe very strongly about the work that's being done here. And I'd like to shore up the future generations and their health outcomes through that kind of gift. So we have a a newsletter that you've probably been able to pick up outside, which is called Breakthrough. And uh, once you give a donation to us, and I think you've got a little donation form there if you'd like to use that, you go on our mailing list to receive our Breakthrough newsletter. We have tours here, public tours. 
every two weeks we have a tour going around and having a look at the laboratories and talking to our scientists, if you'd like to come along to one of those. And of course we have two more public seminars. On Friday the 17th of July, which will be on type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and Wednesday the 9th of September, genomics and the revolution in medical research. We still have a few seats available for both of those. As mentioned before, we have a wonderful website, which is www.garvin.org.au, and you can see the much talked about fracture risk calculator that Professor Eisman just mentioned. We have seminar video archives, so all the videos from the last two years of these seminars are able to be sourced from our website, and we have disease fact sheets on there as well. Finally, I'd just like to encourage you to fill out our survey form, which you have in that little pack, and you have the opportunity to win one of three beautiful framed images of neural stem cells. Who'd have thought they looked that good, really? Gorgeous. <laughs> But they are quite stunning and they're a great talking piece. So that would be a thank you and that's drawn on the 30th of March. So please come up and say hello in the break to one of the staff. We'd love to talk to you and help us to discover the next major breakthroughs. Thank you.